Cool. So what I'm going to do in this video, what this video is going to serve is one of several purposes. One, continue testing this mic until I can figure out the proper settings to make sure it sounds good, good quality, doesn't pop, etc. It's a good mic, but it's so new and different from my previous headset mic that I'm still kind of juggling that balance right now. So I apologize if there's popping in this video. Two, they kind of serve as a kind of updated response to TV Skyen's video that they did on the Jinx's new lore that came out at the beginning of 2017. And I did a response video way back then, I let them know I was going to do a response video, it wasn't like new or out of nowhere. I hit them up, told them about it, apologized because I pronounced their name wrong back then, and I'm pretty sure I still am now, so if they're watching, I'm sorry once again. But furthermore, also because considering that we're considered a like a Jinx YouTuber, like even more so than a League YouTuber, I'm considered like a Jinx channel, uh, we don't really talk about the lore that often. And that kind of comes on the back of, you know, the game doesn't really have a story mode or a mode where the lore is very relevant or needed to be known. It's mainly gameplay stuff, so we kind of mainly talk about gameplay stuff. But I thought, you know, next month marks five years since Jinx has been in League of Legends. I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a lore video, a little bit of a, like a, a redo of a response video as well, because that one was kind of messy. And back when we were kind of just starting out doing YouTube consistently anyways, the tail end of 2016, so it's almost been two years of that. So with that being said, for all those that kind of, you know, care about that kind of a thing, want to you know listen to this video you should also go check out tv sky because number three it's a bit of an excuse to call them out or give them a shout out i believe is the the proper way to say that so you can go check them out they did do a video like i said and it's 51 minutes long we're not going to watch you know the, the whole video or even half the video i want you to go watch their video and if i just watch the video over here you'll have no reason to go and watch the video over there so that kind of defeats the purpose that's also what's the problem with react channels sometimes right so anyways that's going to be I mean, the main things I'm going to go over in this. They kind of actually, and why I kind of want to do this video and why I originally even did the video as a response was, you know, back then in 2017 and when the new stories were coming out, in particular January 2017, Warwick Rework had dropped, a lot of Zon Champion bios had dropped, and a lot of people were kind of just excited about, you know, just getting new Jinx content, period, that they maybe didn't think about too much about. Was it the same kind of champion? Did it change things about the character too much? Or was it more of just like a fleshing out of the old lore, which I'll get into in a second here, it's why it's on the screen. If it was too much of a changing, was it the same character but fleshed out? And kind of just different things like that. That was kind of interesting. They, they did a different take on what otherwise I saw was just kind of basically excitement for the fact that there just was content. And that's kind of what made me intrigued and wanted to for me to kind of, you know, do a video and a response video on that because my channel is mainly a discussion channel, right? And not like if you don't agree with me, get out. It's usually as long as we have civil discussion, people can have different opinions. And as such, I kind of wanted to make a video because of that. Even way back then, now I want to because again, A, testing the new mic, gotta be honest with you guys. But also because I also want to go check them out and I also think it's just their take was so different than most of what I saw that it was interesting. And the basically the short of it is not to put words in their mouth, they don't like 100% hate the whole thing, but they do think there are certain things that went down in the story that maybe contradict a little bit of the reasons why people maybe fell in love with Jinx to begin with. And I will get into that in a second too. First, we're going to cover the previous lore, but first I'm going to get some water because I just... Man, I haven't recorded this much in this many videos and stuff in a while, so I didn't realize how much I was going to need that. Thank goodness I went and grabbed that for this take. So for the previous lore, I'm just going to read it verbatim and then we'll you know go into like you know their video and like the new stuff the new story and stuff but to give context this is all people had when it came to jinx besides the music video up until this point this was the previous lore and it starts with a quote by jinx saying oh look i'm opening my box of care oh wait it's empty jinx lives to wreak havoc without a thought for the consequences leaving a trail of mayhem and panic in her wake a manic and impulsive criminal, she despises nothing more than boredom, and gleefully brings her own volatile brand of pandemonium to the one place she finds the dullest, Piltover. With an arsenal of deadly toys, she unleashes the brightest explosions and loudest blasts, all the better to shock and surprise the hapless authorities, always just out of the law's reach. Jinx's favorite game is to toy with Piltover's finest, especially Fi. Piltover had been known as a city of progress, a place where peace and order reigned, the serenity that was challenged when a new kind of criminal arrived, the likes of whom had never been seen. This mysterious outlaw unleashed a series of warped and destructive capers that endangered the entire city, and left its people reeling from the worst crime spree in Piltover's history. As a string of crimes without reason or rhyme, or rhyme or reason, hit the city, sightings of the lawbreaker emerged. 
Though the young woman's origins were a mystery, some saw traces of Piltov for Hextech in her firearms, while others described the street fashions of Zahn in her dress. Because her arrival always brought trouble with it, those who crossed her path soon gave her a name. Jinx. As Jinx's rampage escalated, Caitlyn, the sheriff of Piltover, responded by declaring a state of emergency and organizing a citywide manhunt. In typical Jinx fashion, the criminal marked the Piltover treasury, the city's most secure building, with a direct challenge to its most abrasive officer, with a caricature of Vi's spi- uh, Vi's face, I should say, splashed across the treasury facade and a scribbled time and date of her supposed raid. Jinx was openly daring the enforcer to try and stop her from robbing it. And this is the caricature over here. Determined to put the troublemaker behind bars, Vi watched and waited outside the treasury until Jinx's time had finally come. True to her scrawled promise, the smiling menace showed her face. Knowing this was her chance to capture the outlaw, Vi gave chase into the building's interior. She smashed through wall after wall to chase down Jinx who giggled as she lit up the evacuated treasury with fiery explosions. Vi finally quartered the criminal inside the vault, but Jinx wasn't done just yet. With a maniacal laugh, she fired a barrage of rockets, bringing the entire building up down upon them both. When Vi finally crawled out of the ruins, the battered enforcer found no trace of Jinx. Adding insult to injury, not a single ounce of gold had been taken from the ruined vault. Instead, the criminal left a parting message to her favorite officer of the law. A challenge now only visible through the gaping opening in Piltover skylines. The lights of the city spelled out a simple taunt, you'll never catch me. As Vi read the message, she heard the distant laughter of her new nemesis and the city plunged into utter darkness for the very first time. So with New Jinx's bio, they do touch on a couple of those things actually, like for example the opening paragraph is actually kind of just the opening paragraph from here as well, all of this basically, but right here. It's the second paragraph that starts to kind of maybe change some of the perceptions about what Jinx is and what changes have possibly been made for the character in an attempt to flesh all this out. This for example reads, No one knows for sure where exactly Jinx came from, but many urban legends and folk tales have sprung up around her. Some have her as a young gang member who fell in with the wrong crowd and was either traumatized by one too many killings or suffered too much at the hands of an enemy or is driven insane by the sump fumes. A few of the old timers in Zon remember a young girl who might fit Jinx's description, but the girl they speak of is a far cry from the one who became Piltover's bane. This girl was sweet and innocent, a tinkerer with big ideas, who never quite fit in and came to a bad end. Some even whisper that Jinx isn't even human, that she's some kind of avenging spirit of mayhem, come to wreak havoc upon Piltover in revenge for the thousands who died when Zon sank into the earth. Now, I'm going to go to TV Sky's video in a second here, but one of the things that first does is something that they mentioned that I'm going to let them explain more better just in their video called Chekhov's Gun. And basically what it does here is, yeah, it's not saying that this is Jinx, but they're pretty much drawing our attention to this because they want us to think this is basically Jinx prior to being Jinx, what she was like beforehand. And the thing about old Jinx before, you know, this had happened is she just was. She just had appeared. She kind of just was who she was because she was. Now granted, in that old lore that we read, it kind of didn't give any prior, you know, to her really kind of showing up and causing mayhem. So sure, you can make that argument, but one of the things that they talk about in this video is that one of the things that they kind of start doing in this thing, in this lore, in this newer story, is explaining Jinx. And sometimes, like an antagonist or a foil and stuff doesn't necessarily have to be explained, right? Sometimes they could just be the way they are because they are, and that's a character you can actually make work. But I'm just going to go into, I have some I have some notes here. Uh, basically, first and foremost, there's just a definition of Jinx prior to all of this that they talk about. That, that was pretty good. Also, I'm gonna, I am going to be playing a little bit of their video because I want you to hear their voice, how smooth it is. And also, as another reminder to go check them out. But also just like listen to kind of what they have to say as the definition is of Jinx prior to all this before we get into then the second part here of what they're kind of trying to do with this newer lore. So first. So Jinx worked in her old form because she was chaotic, she was manic, she was funny, but she was also extremely dangerous and kind of scary when you get right down to it. She was not evil in the traditional sense of the word because she had no agenda. She didn't, she literally never meant anything by it when she blew up a building or set something on fire. It wasn't that she meant to hurt anyone, she just wanted to see it blow up and catch on fire. So right there, just kind of like a, a, a brief explanation is pretty much Jinx is kind of like the, the impulse you might have ever had to knock over something just to see it break. 
the, the, the classic line that we all know from like the Dark Knight, you know, some people just want to watch the world burn. It wasn't necessarily that it was any evil intent, that it was out to, you know, mass murder people because they wanted to mass murder people. There's a quote, and I believe it's by August himself, the kit designer for Jinx, on the Jinx AMA on the Reddit, then I don't want to touch that subreddit with a stick, so I'm just going to try and remember it from memory, and I believe it was like, if Jinx was walking in an alley with a knife and she passed by somebody, she wouldn't stab them to death because she doesn't want to kill that person. She doesn't want to kill people. It's more so if she was passing by that same person and they were standing on a box of dynamite and she had a rocket launcher in hand, she would shoot the box of dynamite because the explosion would be oh so cool without regard for the person's well-being on the top. If the person somehow survived the explosion unscathed, she wouldn't then be like, oh, well, now I gotta blow you up, too. She just wanted to explode the box of dynamites for the explosion. That was, that's kind of it, right? The person could also just not be there, and she'd still shoot the box of dynamites for the explosion. It's, it's that kind of an idea, right? It's kind of like why I watched Power Rangers growing up. They had a bunch of explosions and fights and, like, the Megazord battles and, and, and the craziness like that. That's part of, like, literally why I watched that. An example that they mentioned in their video later on is about, you know, if you've ever seen like a really expensive China vase and you kind of just wanted to knock it over just as, you know, because you, you knew there'd be consequences, but you just wanted to see it shatter or something like that. Or since we're talking about video games, if you've ever been playing like a sandbox game and there's been like a traffic pile up and you're just like, if I toss a grenade, they'll blow that whole thing up and it'd be super awesome. Now granted, you might get five stars and the SWAT team might be all over your behind in a split second afterwards, but like still, that's that's kind of the idea, right? It's like, you, it'd still be cool, the explosion would still be cool, I'd still want to do it anyway. Consequences, we'll worry about that afterwards. In the moment, let's just do it, impulsively, just just boom, there we go. That's kind of jinx, right? In a, in a little bit of a nutshell. Maybe a little bit of over oversimplification, if I can pronounce the words right, oversimplifying her a bit, but that's kind of that's kind of the idea leading into the story. The, the, uh, the expectation and idea is about Jinx going into this. Now, going into this, and after reading that, they're now changing that a little bit. They're, they're going, this is actually a little bit of what Jinx is now. This is possibly what she was, and maybe now why she is the way she is. And to not maybe say verbatim what they TV Sky and said, but they pretty much took her character and transformed her instead into the Birk Birkenberg? Yeah broken bird trope and i'll let him explain a little bit more about you know there are they're trying to explain jinx as it were uh in a second here but that, that's kind of a little bit of what has been going on just with this like, you know second paragraph so hold on here it is this is a huge mistake now you might say well isn't this just i bumped my microphone there sorry about that you might say isn't this just a throwaway thing they're not trying to explain her they're saying oh some might remember her but maybe it's mysterious maybe that's not true maybe it's not what they know yes this is possible. Unfortunately, that's not how narrative convention works. If you know something about theater, you might know something about the concept called Chekhov's gun. Oh, Basically, Chekhov's gun is a principle in theater that says if you show during a play at some point that there is a gun above the fireplace or that a character has a gun or a gun is part of the scenery in any way, then by the end of the play, the gun must have been fired. Because if the gun isn't fired, and you took care to spend time showing that there was a gun, then you have wasted time. If the gun, if you're not going to fire the gun, don't put it in the scene. And it's sort of a, it's sort of a principle that's kind of meant to communicate that you need to be brief. You don't, you need to not waste the audience's time with. Yeah, so that's basically it. They they did a lot better job explaining also Chekhov's gun and stuff too. But it's basically if you're going to show us that, that's that's kind of unless you're just you know putting that in there to waste people's time. In which case, you didn't need to put that in there at all. You know, that's essentially what they're kind of saying Jinx is. She was, you know, a normal person. She was an innocent girl, a tinkerer. She fell into a pit of ace chemicals, and now she terrorizes Gotham City. That's exactly kind of what they've done now here a little bit. And, you know, that's always been a thing since Jinx was created, right? Comparing her to the Joker and or Gollum, because she talks with her own rocket launcher and stuff like that. Sure, but, like, the, the thing here is it maybe changes that a little bit from the character that we were just talking about of, you know, the, the embodiment of, like, impulsiveness and the embodiment of just kind of doing something because it is, it, it is exciting and fun and because you want to without thinking ahead about the consequences, spontaneity and things like that, like embodied in a champion form. Now it's kind of more like, oh, well, this was, you know, like I said, I think I believe they said it was the broken bird trope kind of a thing where they, they were a certain way and then they're kind of not this way because something terrible and traumatic happened to them. And so now they're this, you know, terrorizing, chaotic thing because they were traumatized versus just being the way they are. And what they mentioned in this video, too, is that it, it, it's an interesting character when you go that way, right? There's other characters who that's been popping up 
speaking of you know the joker and stuff i saw a video about you know humanizing the joker and why people think that's wrong when they do try and do that because the joker is like the antithesis of batman so he doesn't necessarily need to have a huge reason behind being you know the anti of batman he doesn't need to have his own you know his parents were also killed and but he just went about it differently than batman did or anything like that right he could just be insane because he's just insane and it just kind of works in the dynamic of joker versus batman and so what tb sky also mentioned earlier in this video was that the dynamic between Vi, Caitlyn, and Jinx. Why, Vi, or Caitlyn, I should say, is like the more order and logical one of them. Vi, while she's still logical in a sense, has her own logic, straightforward and kind of brute, while maybe Vi is more of the tactical thinker kind of person. Jinx, as a foil to this trio, is kind of like the she just is because she is and no one knows why. And it just kind of works in that like three way trivecta. Um, and to keep on the Batman analogy, sure, one, uh, one analogy I saw once was like basically think of it as Vi is is like Batman, right? He's he's the hands-on, he'll he'll put people in body cast, or she'll put people in body cast like he will, kind of a thing. Caitlin is more like the Commissioner Gordon, right? He'll still do this stuff, but he'll probably be more like orderly and strategic about it. Surround the building with a SWAT team first kind of a thing, possibly think about it. And then Jinx, of course, being the Joker in this analogy as well, being She's just doing whatever because she's just doing it, right? Like, there, there doesn't necessarily have to be a reason there, and that's fine. And so with this, what they're doing is they're kind of explaining a little bit of a character that was the embodiment of something that, when they start explaining this, kind of doesn't make them the embodiment of necessarily anymore. Now, afterwards, like, after they are crazy, sure, they still can kind of be that, but they're also kind of this way because something happened to them. That probably didn't happen to the, us that related, to, or like, not even necessarily related to the character, but like the character, because we saw them as the embodiment of those things. If that makes any sense whatsoever, please let me know, because I, in my head, that sounded great. Now out loud, I don't know how great that sounds. But, continuing on, one of the things that they also uh, touch on, which I will play a little bit of here, actually, which is about at seven minutes in, uh, I do recommend you watch the whole video because we're again I'm not touching on the whole video, but they, they do a really great job explaining certain things that I want to talk about. So I'm gonna let them speak a little bit more, and then we're gonna come back explaining some more stuff. Again, they talk about you know explaining more of Jinx, what they're doing here, and then Jinx as an agent of chaos as well. So here we go. Ugh. Now this is what they're trying to do here is they're trying to give Jinx a psychology that we can understand that okay she was someone who was an inventor who was sweet who was innocent who was kind then something traumatic happened to her that changed her warped her turned her into a darker version of what she is and this is sort of the Batman Joker kind of thing where the Joker is supposed to represent the dark side of Batman or every single Marvel villain by the way if you've watched those movies you will know that every single villain in every single Marvel movie almost is like the evil opposite of the hero. Red Skull is the opposite of Captain America. Loki is the opposite of Thor. Iron Monger in the first Iron Man movie is the opposite of Tony Stark. Like, that thing where, oh, if you flip this hero character just a little bit, you get the evil guy. This is the same trope of the thing where, okay, if things had turned out differently, maybe they would be a different character. They're trying to give Jinx a psychology. They're trying to explain her. Now, what I mentioned before is, Jinx works best when she is an agent of chaos. That's how she works in her interactions with Caitlyn and Vi, which, by the way, they play up very strongly that that is still a major part of her character interactions, so they can't just go, oh, we're going to move her away from that. No, no, that's still core to her character. But that was informed by the notion that where Caitlyn and Vi are explainable, they're logical, they make sense, Jinx makes no sense. She's crazy. That's why she works as a foil, as a dynamic. So when they try to explain her, ugh... I think it breaks that thing. It, it, it makes Jinx into a completely different character because instead of being something which is fun, dangerous, scary, interesting, she becomes tragic. But Jinx is not supposed to be tragic. She's supposed to be that thing. She's supposed to be the personification of the feeling that when you see an expensive china vase, you could just knock it over and knock it on the floor. And you know that it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you just... It would be so easy to just reach out and push it down, and Jinx is the personification of that impulse. She, she's the one who will do that and won't care about the consequences. That's why she's fun. That's why we relate to her. That's why we go, oh, in some ways, I wish I could be like her. Just not get... ...and blow... ...be chaotic and break everything. 
Okay, we're, we're, we, got, we got to stop there. The demonetization. Um, yeah, basically that. That what you pretty much heard, they're, they're explaining right there, right? They're, and, they, and they brought up the vase thing too. Like if you go to the third floor of Nordstrom's, there's a lot of expensive stuff that you probably would want to knock over just to see what it'd be like to watch it shatter and stuff. There would be consequences though, and you can't do that. So hands in your pockets, don't touch anything. That kind of a thing. That's what they are. And so when they, when they as they're kind of explaining, when they, when they try to explain that a little bit, it does change that a little bit. Now, granted, it, the question I'll pass off, though, is how much of that is a problem? Because some people maybe don't care all that much. They actually like the fact that they can, you know, look at Jinx now and be like, oh, this was someone, you know, this was a character, and then something happened to them, and that's how they are. The explanation doesn't leave... Like, there, there are some people that they need that explanation, I guess, and so for them, it might not actually be much of a problem because they're like, it was just too much of a question mark. I like the character, but that was too much of a mystery, and I want to know more of the mystery. Well, one of the things that I remember prominently from the Jinx subreddit specifically was a debate about how much people actually wanted the mystery and didn't want the mystery leading up to when the story was going to drop this story and then the wedding crasher when it dropped was the idea of you know some of the the fun of jinx is that there's mystery behind her that we don't know why she is the way she is right maybe this was always intended if this was written back in you know if, if they were writing stories like this back in 2013 or 2013 i should say when jinx came out this would have been exactly what they would have wrote back then too right like maybe there's a world that we don't know of where this was always actually going to be what Jinx was supposed to be and they just didn't write this much depth back then but at the same time for some people what they liked then was still not knowing actually the fact that she was kind of a mystery the fact that she was maybe just impulse and chaos personified and that was kind of all they needed so that was something I want to mention and I wanted to let you guys hear them talk too because I thought that was kind of interesting we have a little bit more here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I have the timestamps and we could watch, but because this video is already starting to get kind of lengthy, I'm just going to summarize it up to being, uh, one of the things they also kind of changed too is instead of Jinx doing her stuff for like impulsive sake and just to see maybe something blow up and stuff, they kind of started giving her a little bit of like of an ego and also letting her be a little bit more tactical and actually more of a mastermind and stuff like that instead of, you know, she just did it because kind of a thing. She kind of now does her crimes and want to make sure people know that it's her that did the crime instead of just doing it because she just felt like doing it out of boredom or something like that. And when it comes to the, the politics there, it's also because it seems like in the story, a lot of what she does is against Piltover specifically, which yes, in the old story, she would, you know, attack Piltover because she just found it dull. But here it kind of seems like she's, if she also is now a bit more egotistical and a bit more tactical, she's now purposely doing it against Piltover, not because she finds it boring, but possibly in the politics of, with the new, you know, lore reworks and stuff, Piltover kind of became this kind of stuck up a bit of a city that also possibly was the reason why half of like Zaun got pretty much collapsed into the ocean a lot of people died so that's why they mean when they say maybe Jinx is the personified mayhem of the spirits of those who died taking revenge on Piltover for doing that right it, it creates this world building thing that TV Sky and talks a lot more of that I will like I said you gotta watch their video to get more in depth of it but basically the the, the issue is that they take Jinx that kind of maybe didn't, even in the music video and stuff, we don't even know that she's from Zon, right? Unless someone says it. We don't know her connections to Zon. She doesn't really talk about Zon all that much. And they put her now in a situation where maybe she actually does care about Zon. And suddenly she has attachments that she didn't have before. While before she kind of just acted on her own and because and did things because she wanted to and such. Now there's a possibility that, of course, because she's also that tinkerer that fell in with the wrong crowd or had came to a bad end. She's also that tinkerer that also was very, you know, proud to be from Zon like an Echo was or something like that and now is terrorizing Piltover on Zon's behalf potentially. There's there's that too which can be something that is worth talking about. One of the things that they too also mention is the concept of just world building in general using you know these bio stories to talk about the world that we don't really know of so we can't really you know answer questions when they come up. Uh, one of the ones that I, I went past it but it was about right here that they mentioned in their video too. After on how could a Zonite Kim Punk possibly obtain such lethal firearms? The answer is we don't know because we don't know about Zonet Chem Punks because we don't turn on the news and see that here. We're not in that world to know and that's not something that had previously been very well explained. Uh, you know, just kind of what they were prior, right? This is when the lore stuff was just coming out and I'm not going to nitpick on this part particularly too much, but I, I do find that something worth also talking about is not that you can't do it in a short story or something, but in a bio specifically, if you try and world build, how effective does that or is that not for you when you're reading a story? Because maybe you don't know things like that, you know? We're not living in Zon. I might explain why the skies here actually are gray 10 months out of 12 months of the year, actually, but in general, we don't live in their world to know these things in the bio specifically, 
And you know, how's that? How's that work usually when you're reading a story? It, does that does it ever take away from you, or maybe does it, is that fine by you? You just kind of see that like as a throwaway, and you kind of keep moving past it. One of the things, though, speaking of like the the ego, the ego, and the tactical and the planning and stuff like that, is Jinx does attack the treasury in this expanded lore like she does here. But here, you know, she kind of wrote the caricature, challenged Vi to try and stop her, kind of just straight up showed up and then like made her way in the vault anyway. And there was a battle and then the thing collapsed and that was kind of that. Here, it's a bit more Jinx, you know, prior had actually planned how to get in. She like stowed away inside one of the containers, I believe. I can't find the, I wish I would have had this, you know, already set um, up. But Jinx, despite seeming reckless, here it is actually right here. Jinx, despite seeming reckless in her actions, had a plan and had been in motion for days. She had hidden herself in a modified coin crate at the toll towers of the sun gates and had delivered it to the vault two days previously. Jinx was already inside wreaking havoc, right? Like, it does make it a bit different from this, where it's like, yeah, she impulsively possibly challenged Vi and then just shows up and then things just happen, maybe Captain Jack Sparrow-esque style. Here, it's like, oh no, th this was a plan. This has been in motion for days. She knew about all these things. She knew how to do all these different stuff. And so as such, it pretty much then devolves the same way, though, where, you know, Vi realizes what's happening, chases Vi or chases Jinx in, ignoring Caitlyn's order to go in as a team, the whole setup SWAT team around the building style thing. And then, you know, the building collapses. They don't get crushed to death. And it's kind of the same thing for the most part. But um, that's something even that was kind of mentioned. I'll, they explain a bit more of a thing with the whole... Um, where is it? Eventually, they confront it. No one knows what passes between them. Again, the Chekhov's gun, it implies, though, something passes between them, but we don't get to know. It's kind of the whole classic, are they sisters? Thing that Riot's been doing for like five years. And it's just like, you could just say it. Here, this is actually something that people were excited about on the Jinx subreddit. Were we finally going to learn if Jinx and Vi were sisters? You could just say, checkbox, yes or no. And instead they go, no one knows what passes between them, but uh, something happened between them, and you still don't get to know. Ha, ha, ha. So, um, you know, there's that too. But um, in, in general, that was kind of basically a breakdown of the of, of the lore side. It was, it, was, it was definitely an interesting thing because it did give us more Jinx content on the bottom of the line. Some people, you know, reading through it, maybe they don't mind. Maybe watching, listening to this video, they still don't mind. But I do think it's, it, it's, diff it's interesting to talk about these different things because I, for one, kind of didn't think about it too much myself. I was just kind of also in that boat of we just got more Jinx stuff. So I'm just kind of happy about that. And now it made me think about it a bit more. You know, why do we like this character? This character that's pretty much the embodiment of, you know, do it. You know, Jinx doesn't care about the gratification about if they know that she did something or that she didn't in the past. It was kind of a, you know, you just do it and not care what other people think about you kind of a thing. Jinx was kind of a life lesson in that aspect. It was just you do something because you wanted to do it. You didn't care about what other people thought about you doing it. If you wanted to, after, you know, you paid your bills and stuff, you came home, you wanted to kick up your feet, turn on Netflix and rewatch say the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog or the magic school was from your childhood or Power Rangers because I got a lot of those on there um, you could and you don't have to care what other people think you don't have to care if people think that's mature or not it's like a first of all you don't pay my bills <laughs> unless you do or something like that I don't really have to abide by what you're saying but like the whole concept of you're not mature because you still watch the stuff from when you were a kid or something and the, and the analogy I'm trying to make here is no maturity is more about you know learning how to not really care about what other people think about you and that you can still enjoy those things regardless of course as long as it's not like illegal and like you're literally falling down uh jinx's footsteps here that that's bad don't do that but i'm saying like the idea of you know you do what you want to do you live the life you want to lead do what you kind of enjoy doing despite you know the ideas that may be around it you know learning how to block those out and just kind of doing what you want to do and then on the sideline if you see a cars of you know piling up and lining up in gta 5 shooting them with a rocket launcher and then probably getting gunned down by the los santos police department afterwards that's not good of course but you know that's they're very aggressive in that game they're like vi personified in a police system actually it's they like to really hit you in that game by the way but that kind of a thing combined it all and did this story really change it overall that's something i want to leave off to you guys as well if it's too much of a change that you know is kind of more like this or if, it, if it's a change that you notice but maybe didn't care about too much well the final point i want to talk on is the wedding crasher we're going to briefly talk you know a bit about it one of the things that was kind of interesting about the wedding crasher was or one of the points that Skyen made right off the bat was if you thought about Jinx crashing a party, how would you think she would crash a wedding or just anything? Honestly speaking, why can't I find this part? Why won't it come up? Oh dear, why? There you go. This is what they talked about in the, in the wedding crasher. 
the story, she pretty much she infiltrates a wedding in a disguise. Again, she was planning. She has a plan in motion, things like that. And then she escapes at the very end after blowing up like, like, the uh, food stand and stuff. While in, in here, they mentioned why wouldn't they just maybe do this? Just ride a bunch of rockets into the wedding and then escape before she could be caught. I don't really want to like put a counter argument. I do think like just if I had to try and answer that question, it would be a very short story, right? That, that probably would be it. And the whole uh, excitement around these was making longer stories. How I would support their argument, though, if I would counter the counter argument, is the the Jinx and Ziggs, you know, comic that they made. Actually, they could have did something like that in story form, and probably still then allowed us to get more Jinx in a story that wasn't a bio, while still maybe making more sense for some other people that felt like this was a bit more like tactical and planning and stuff than Jinx is really known for, right? Potentially. I'm, again, part of why I'm making this video is mainly to make a discussion around this. So if you disagree with me, or you disagree with them, you're free to say it. And if for some reason they're watching this, by the way, first of all, hi, uh, liked your video. It was good. Um, and that's why I'm responding for a second time. It's got me thinking again. And it was just like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. I gotta do it better. Um, but it was good. I thought, and it got me thinking. And that's what I actually really appreciate it about your video, by the way. But also just, you know, to have a conversation around this kind of a stuff. And when you're reading a story, when you think about a character, when you think about why you like the character, if that changes a little bit or if that changes a lot of it, does that, you know, disrupt it for you? Or does that give you more of a character and make you understand more of it? And then you just go, oh, okay, well, this is actually the character now. And this is, this is, this is fine um, for, for those reasons. Because, you know, one of the things I get asked sometimes is like, you know, why? Why do you, you know, main Jinx? You, if, if, if you've met me, I'm, I'm nothing like Jinx per se. I'm not out blowing up stuff and doing stuff. And if Jinx existed in our world, she'd probably be trying to blow us up. That wouldn't probably be very good for many people. I'd be taking cover like all y'all would be. It wouldn't be like, oh, we're friends, right? It's like, no, probably. Especially if I'm standing on a box of dynamite. I gotta, it's not a good look for anybody. If anyone was trying to do what Jinx is doing, they'd be in jail by like three o'clock. If not just, you know, in the ground, staring at the roof of the church. As the saying goes. So that being said, it's like, you know, it was kind of a bit of those things. Part of it was a friend of mine who was a huge Jinx fan, was just spamming the Get Jinx music video back at the beginning of like 2014, like at least several times a week. And eventually made me remember that League of Legends was a game I tried to download and try to get to work, but my old computer couldn't make it work. And then it finally did just work for some reason. And Jinx back then was one of the free to play champions if you were new to the game. Through levels one through six, we just keep the same group of champions, and so I just played Jinx. I was like, "Oh, that, that, that's that one champion from the music video that my friend really likes." And then Jinx kind of just clicked a little bit. It was her and Varus. It was going to be one of those two, and I still kind of Varus is one of actually my go-to champions if I can't play Jinx for that very reason. It was just those were the only two champions I had any success with really, and uh, I really actually ended up liking the character. The the lore was kind of interesting in my opinion. The music video, which at that point was now stuck in my head for like the rest of 2014. <laughs> And then the, the kid itself I thought was pretty fun too, you know, using the passive for the first time, taking off into a wall and dying. It was kind of bad, but back then when I was new to the game, I didn't know what feeding was anyway, and I just thought that was hilarious. So, there are definitely reasons why I, you know, like playing the character and like playing the champion, became a Jinx-centric YouTube channel, as most people have guessed call me, even more so than League, I'm known more as a Jinx YouTuber, so it was overdue to do a lower kind of video as it was anyways but that's kind of the reasons why it's like stuff back here was interesting now i could explain my take on all of this and i it, it kind of aligns with them a little bit for the most part in which case it does take a champion and like a a character i guess and does change them a bit now i don't know how much it i don't want to say matters it's more so i don't know how much it takes away from the, the experience, because at the beginning of the video, like we mentioned, there's no story mode. So unless that becomes more relevant, I guess, then it doesn't maybe, I don't want to say matter, because I feel like that means I'm saying like their video doesn't matter or nothing, or this video doesn't matter even. That's not what I'm trying to say. This is more so until that happens, this is just something that people don't really even have to know anyways. They can just play the game without it and it'd be okay. But it is something that just is interesting to think about, I think. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to go over these things and talk about this stuff. So with that being said, in the comment section down below, first of all, go check them out, go subscribe to them, go like that. I feel bad, I had to unsubscribe so I could resubscribe to show what that looks like, by the way. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to, but I had to to do that right there or else, you know, people, and sometimes people need visuals to be able to visually do something. Uh, forgive me, please. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is, go do that what I just did right there like it of course go watch the video of course like comment subscribe this video as well but in the comment section down below i really want to have a discussion about these things that we talked about in this video you know like 
do these things matter? Chekhov's gun, did they change Jinx too much? Did you even notice that they changed Jinx? Because lore ain't part of the core gameplay of League, do you even care for that matter? But this is going to be a little bit of a longer video to test out this mic amongst other things. Again, if TB Sky and actually watches this video, hopefully I did you justice. Hopefully I didn't just spend like 30 minutes mispronouncing your name again like I did back in 2017 when I first made that response video which was kind of rough because that's when I was first starting out YouTube really so it's almost been two years since that but anyways really quick one thing I wanted to throw on on the tail end of this that I kind of didn't prior to and I apologize is you know if, if people want to respond to this that's totally fine if, if Skyen watches this and he wants to make a like a response to this response that's totally fine it, it, for whatever reasons that you want to if it's if it's literally like hey we need a filler kind of video while we're working on a bigger project in the background and now this is a means to do so totally for it if there's things that i misrepresented when i was talking about this um that i put words either in their mouth or like people that have watched the video also prior felt like i didn't uh describe correctly i'm totally fine for people you know you know saying hey i think this is actually what they meant by this and i don't think you explained that properly or correctly go for it by all means i'm totally fine with that whatsoever like part of the reason i'm responding to this is not because i disagree with them it's just because like i said i think it was a great video actually and i think it's worth watching so make sure to go check that out. Make sure if you want to do that, that's totally okay, by the way. Of course, this is this is like their video first anyways. So like if them specifically want to make a response for the same reasons, you know, it, I don't got no rights over this. This is, this is your thing. Um, I'm fine with that, totally. But I just want to put that in there on the tail end in case there was any question about that. Like, yeah, I want to respond to this, but I don't know how they will react. I'm going to be totally fine, actually. So by all means, th again, thank you for watching this video. Don't know what you do to be next. Life can have a lot of kinks. Till next time, take care. GG, get jinxed.